Miss D, this is my disclaimer for my movie. This black label box is empty, as you can see. These wine bottles, all four of them, have been broken before. They were in my recycle bin for like the past month because recycle never comes. And so is this vodka bottle. I don't know where we got it, it's empty. We're gonna fill it up with water in the movie. And these two are gonna be filled up with yellow dyed water, so everything is fake. The end. Much of the smuggling to the U.S. started in the 1920s with the advent of Prohibition. Canadians took advantage of this due to their proximity to the U.S. and the huge border that they share along British Columbia, Ontario, Toronto, and so on. People would walk through the woods with crates of liquor and deliver them to U.S. citizens who wanted to drink. I got the liquor, eh? Yeah, have fun in America. Law enforcement agencies and other government programs tried to control smuggling and stop it. Although this didn't work all the time, it worked most of the time. People would take their liquor to speakeasies or their homes and they'd try and sell it or they'd just drink it. Depends on which person you were talking about. Most of it was brought to speakeasies where people would gather, drink alcohol, and enjoy friends. Although illegal, they were great places in the 1920s to have a good time. Even policemen got in on the action sometimes. Government organizations are attempting to stop this illegal substance trade, and it's even harder than it was in the 1920s. Once the crime organizations get drugs and other illegal substances, they give it to the dealers, who then sell it to our children. Children as young as 16 are doing marijuana and cocaine. From the 1920s to today, illegal substances have plagued the population of the U.S. The End Thank you for watching, Charlie Peter, signing off.